Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another Thoughtful Tuesday. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Gracious God and Father, we turn aside in these moments from everyday things to focus on you, to listen for your voice, to read your word, and to feel you in our presence and you with us. Father, we ask for your blessing as we turn to your word. We pray that you will speak through my lips, that you will fill our hearts with your fullness and remind us of your power, your greatness, your love and your mercy. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me begin with a phrase which I hope to end with. There is no sell-by date on personal faith or commitment to God. There's no sell-by date on personal faith or commitment to God. Everything you buy nowadays has a sell-by date. Best before. We look for it on products to make sure what we're buying is fresh. But there's no sell-by date on personal commitment or faith in the God that we worship. You're never too young to come to faith in Christ and you're never too old. But age is something that all of us focus on. We make our determination that, well, I'm too old to do that. Or I think at my age, I don't think so. I always remember President George Herbert Walker Bush and how he, for the first time, went skydiving on his 75th birthday. I laugh when I think about what his wife Barbara said on that occasion. She said, George, whatever way this goes, this is going to be your last time skydiving. Actually, she was wrong because he celebrated his 75th birthday by doing this, then his 80th, his 85th, and he skydived for the last time when he was 90. He clearly felt that he was not too old to do this. Now, the Bible is filled with its seniors who inspire us, encourage us, at least they ought to. Think of Moses. It says of Moses that his eye was not dimmed, nor his natural strength abated when he was an old man. Most of us wish we could say that. But I want to draw your attention to Caleb this morning. We first meet Caleb in the book of Numbers, the Old Testament book of Numbers in chapter 13. And at that point, Caleb is one of 12 spies sent out by Moses to spy out the land as the Israelites have come to the edge of the desert and are looking across the River Jordan and seeing the land which God has promised to them. And so they reconnoiter the land, they look at their enemy, they consider the strength of the opposing armies, the size of the cities, everything. And of course, the 12, tri the 12 spies differ as to how they see things. Two spies give a very positive report and that's Joshua and Caleb. Ten spies give a very negative report and say, look, the people are too many, their armies are too large and well-equipped, their cities are too uh, protected and, and walled and so on. We'd never be able to take those people. We'd never be able to defeat them in battle. Now, forward wind 45 years, and we meet Caleb again, in Joshua uh, chapter 14, he says this, As you see, the Lord has kept me alive these 45 years as he promised, since the Lord spoke his word to Moses while Israel was journeying in the wilderness. And here I am today, 85 years old, and I'm still as strong today as I was on the day when Moses sent me out. My strength for battle and for my daily tasks is nigh as it was then. 
And he says, give me the opportunity to take this land that Moses had promised to me and my descendants. And even at 85, he says, I am willing to go into battle. I'm willing to take this land and I'm willing to go forward. The lamp of Caleb's faith burned brightly all throughout his life. Think of some of the other seniors in the Bible. When we read the nativity stories of Jesus, we find two seniors waiting for Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus at the temple. We read of Simeon and Anna the prophet. They were both well up in years, and they were promised by God that they would see the Messiah before they died. And they waited expectantly, eagerly, enthusiastically. And that promise was fulfilled, even though they were old. Think, for instance, of Paul. Paul describes himself at one point in some of his letters as Paul the aged, Paul the old man. Now, he wasn't old by our standards. In fact, probably at that stage of his life, Paul wouldn't have been old enough to live in some city. But he thought of himself as old, and by the standards of his own day, he was old, when a man was considered burnt out and near the end at 50 or 55. Peter was white-haired in the service of Jesus Christ. You know, there's a tremendous difference between the epistles of Peter and the Peter you meet in the Gospels. Why? Because he matured. He developed. He became a much more compassionate and caring individual. Peter lost a lot of the brashness that we see in him, the self-confidence, the arrogance even, that we see with him in the Gospels. And then we think of John. John, we traditionally believe, was the oldest of the apostles when he died that he lived to be a very old man. He began following Jesus as a very young man. And he'd spent his whole life serving Jesus Christ, preaching and teaching the gospel across the cities and the churches of the Roman Empire. But he lived to be an old man and never regretted that he had learned to follow and to have faith in Jesus Christ. Sometimes ministers will say that they have people in their church who have grown old, but have not grown up. In other words, Christians who've never matured, Christians who've never developed, never grown in their faith or got any further in their beliefs. They view maybe Bible study as something for other people, not suitable for them. But how can you possibly grow and mature in the faith unless you learn more about what the Bible has to say and learn more about the God and Father who you worship. Remember how I began. There is no sell-by date on personal faith or commitment to Jesus Christ. So no matter how old you feel or how young you are, you can grow in your faith. You can have the attitude of Caleb. I'm as good 45 years on. I'm as strong. I'm as vigorous. I'm as certain about the mercies and blessings of God as I was all those years before. Can you say that? Can I? I hope we can. Because that's true faith in God. Whatever age we become, however old we grow, and I pray that that will be our experience day by day. May God have his blessing. Amen.